Do you or someone you know think that 3D printers are a useless novelty? Well, quite frankly, you're wrong. And in this video, I'm going to show you a range of 3D prints that will convert non-believers. <music> 3D printing has its limitations, but overall it is incredible. Some people, however, have formed the opinion that 3D printing is a useless hobby for making useless objects. And in my opinion, that couldn't be further from the truth. Now, I'm going to provide the evidence to back this up. If someone you know is disrespecting 3D printing, just send them a link to this video. We're going to start by talking about trinkets. This is the ubiquitous 3D Benchy. It's a 3D printing benchmarking tool. You can use it to dial in a new type of filament, and you can use it to directly compare the capabilities of various machines. So it's useful to people who 3D print, but probably typical of the type of trinket to be criticised by those who don't. However, not every trinket lacks value to those who don't 3D print. For instance, this fidget drive that can be printed in a couple of hours for around 50 cents of plastic. For a child with ADHD or ASD, this could be a simple but effective way to improve educational outcomes. And speaking of children, it's time to introduce the Astro Printer channel, whose creator Liam has spent a considerable amount of time printing toys for those less fortunate. Toys for Tots is a program run by the US Reserve uh, Marines. They basically raise money and buy toys for those who are in need. IC3D works with the uh, Toys for Tots program through the, the US uh, Reserve Marines. So last year, 429 makers like myself turn around and printed 68,900 toys for the, for the, uh, children in need. And, and it'll be given to them around Christmas. We do like small little stocking stuffers, like these little chameleons. Then we have the flexi toys, which a lot of kids really like these flexi triceratops and flexible dolphins. But we also get into doing stuff like larger toys, like trains and so on that we actually 3D print and they get donated to kids for um, kids in need around the Christmas time at the end of the year. What if I told you that some of the 3D printed objects you just saw wouldn't be possible to be made any other way? And a good example of this is the fidget drive, which is 3D printed, fully assembled and working. A traditional technique such as milling or machining is what we call subtractive manufacturing because we start with a larger block and subtract material until we're left with what we want. But as you can see, there's absolutely no room between the small parts to fit the cutting piece in. This shape is far too complicated. The king of industrial manufacturing is injection molding, which has insanely high volume and speed capabilities. Injection molding, like 3D printing, is additive manufacturing, meaning we only add the material that we need. But unlike 3D printing, it relies on expensive and complicated molds to create the perfect cavity to inject the molten plastic into and make the object. And you guessed it, this shape with its complicated interlocking parts would be impossible to manufacture in one piece because the mold couldn't be made. With 3D printing, we can produce complicated interlocking pieces all in one go without the need for assembly afterwards. That's why we can make things like chainmail with very little fuss. In 3D printing, we call these objects print in place. And the potential of what can be achieved with this method by creative designers is sky high such as this Jeep complete with moving parts that largely prints in a single piece. Our next topic is a huge one, and that is education. When I started this channel, I was still a technology teacher from kindergarten through to year 12. And for the kids, learning to 3D model was so much more rewarding when they were able to proudly take home the object they had designed at the end of the project. For the older students, we had a lot of success in engineering competitions, such as F1 in schools, where we 3D printed components from the car. We also 3D printed props and aids to be used in the various engineering interviews that formed the competition. 3D printing was integral in unlocking some amazing opportunities for my students, but as a teacher, I also found it invaluable in creating the equipment I needed for rich educational experiences such as this motor mounting system to create stunning spin art, or this 3D printed truck and carriage designed to let young students explore bridge building. The only way I could run these projects were by 3D printing the parts myself on a budget. For example, if a teacher wants to cover projectile motion, 3D printing makes it very cheap and straightforward to produce a class set of mini catapults. 
3D printing is also excellent for making fast prototypes. This is Miles and he's been featured on a few of my videos now. He was helping a friend with a car engine swap. He took a 3D scan of the back of the engine and used this to model up a gearbox adapter. Obviously the final part needs to be made from metal and you want to make sure you get it right the first time. In this example, 3D printing was a cheap and low risk way of testing the geometry of the design was suitable. A plastic prototype was 3D printed, verifying the fit and allowing proper manufacturing to commence. Because 3D printing requires no upfront tooling, it's an ideal manufacturing method to iterate between designs, making comparisons to inform the best end solution. 3D printing is also ideal for scale prototypes. For instance, creating a three-dimensional representation of a building for a client to properly assess its form and proportions. One of my favorite ways to use 3D printing is to support my other hobbies. One of my main hobbies is sim racing and over the last few years I've built up a really nice sim rig. And that includes a 3D printed mount for a cheap Android tablet, a 3D printed housing and mount for a custom dashboard, and this 3D printed keyboard mount that can swivel in and out of position. There's actually 3D printed parts all over this rig and each of them adds to the enjoyment of my hobby. And when it comes to real cars, 3D printing can help there too. Previously, I released a video on the channel detailing how I 3D printed a custom design for an airbox, which is still going strong. Even if your hobbies are more mainstream, such as playing Nintendo Switch, you'll find 3D printed parts to enhance the experience, such as this four-way Joy-Con strap holder to help keep everything organized. If you're into tabletop gaming, there's a huge community around 3D printing your own minis. Or if you're into popular culture and cosplay, 3D printing is a perfect match. As many cosplayers put together very impressive outfits using 3D printing as a major component. You won't be able to buy props like this off the shelf, so 3D printing is an ideal solution. Let's head back to Liam, and you might have already realised one of his large passions is astronomy, which he supplements with 3D printing. I use 3D printing for astronomy when it comes to doing stuff like adding parts to my telescope. So items such as uh, holders for a Raspberry Pi, which controls my telescope to mount the, the Pi on my telescope. I also do other items such as mounts for my to, my laser pointer, 3D printed filter wheels to for astrophotography. I have designed a system to teach the vision impaired how to the constellations by using a hemisphere and they can navigate through tactile touch or we are on the night sky. The term practical printing you might hear a bit but it's also great for replacement parts. We'll start with practical prints, and these Allen keys didn't come with any storage case, so I made my own holder. It's a simple design, bolts onto the edge of my workbench, and holds all of the Allen keys ready to use, but still out of the way. This set of spanners also came without a storage solution. For this one, I designed up a holder made from TPU, a flexible material. And that means it's quite a satisfying feeling as I add each spanner into its position. The holder grips the tool securely, but when I want to use one, they're still very easy to remove. Recently, I cemented a sleeve in the ground to prevent a trailer from rolling away. But how to stop water from getting in when the chock was not in place? I was able to design and print this flexible stopper. Again, it's from a flexible filament, and unlike a permanent stopper, it has a finger hole so I can remove it when necessary a 3D printed practical solution to a very specific problem. So what about replacement parts? Well, I had a wardrobe clip break, leaving the wardrobe fairly useless. I was able to measure up the remaining good clip and 3D print a replacement that not only looked the same, but was functionally identical. A situation that could have been inconvenient became a fun little project thanks to 3D printing. So what about much rarer parts, such as parts for an old car that's been restored painstakingly over decades, including a full dash reskin, where sadly one part was still unavailable, and that was this dash air vent, which was exceedingly rare and hard to find. With some help from Miles and his 3D scanner, we were able to 3D print a reproduction part that was a very close match to the original. That car restoration is still ongoing, but that's one impossible to find part that can now be reproduced with 3D printing. And this type of 3D printing project is my favourite, which brings me to this piece of Formula 1 car. This piece is an example of 3D printing to meet a need where an alternative solution just doesn't exist. As a Formula 1 tragic, I got myself a piece of second-hand Formula 1 car. 
It's made from carbon fiber and has an internal layer of heat shielding to protect it from the heat of the engine. And that's because it covered a screaming V10 on the side pod of a 2005 Williams as driven by Australia's Mark Webber. Cool piece, but how do you display it? I'm quite sure a bracket for this just does not exist. So I designed and 3D printed my own. It's in two materials with the section that touches the carbon fiber being from a flexible TPU and the rest being strong and rigid. Put in some wall anchors, bolt it down, and thanks to 3D printing, I have a way to mount my piece of Formula One car. And these print jobs are honestly my favorite. I frequently find the need for a bracket or an adapter. There's zero chance that an off the shelf solution exists. So I undertake some quick design work and 3D print the solution. And for me, these simple projects are the most satisfying to complete. Maybe you're still not convinced. I guess we're going to have to look at how 3D printing can positively change people's lives. 3D printing can be used for high quality prosthetics, with the first 3D printed prosthetic eye being fitted in November 2021. On the cutting edge, 3D bioprinting can be used to produce living tissue, with the hope that in the future, fully functioning organs can be 3D printed and ready for transplants, cutting cues and saving lives. And for those of us with hobby level printers, we can still make a difference thanks to programs like Enable, who produce functional 3D printed hands for children in need. And the best part is, like my patron Walt, you can sign up to become a volunteer and 3D print your own Enable hands to donate and really make a difference. So the next time someone belittles your hobby or says that 3D printing is just a waste of time, send them to this video. It really is a democratic manufacturing method that lets anyone create an idea, just like children do when they're playing with Lego. A big thank you to Liam for being a guest on this video, and you'll find a bunch of links about him and his work in the video description. And if you're a filament manufacturer watching this, he really seems with the work he does like an ideal candidate for sponsorship. You also might have noticed that a lot of my favorite 3D prints were things that I've designed myself, which is why I put out a poll earlier this week, seeing if there was an appetite for people to learn a free CAD program. After over 4,000 votes, the answer is a resounding yes, so look out for a concise series in the future. Let me know your favorite useful 3D print in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.